Hello, this is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside. I'm just going to start doing some videos again. Um, over the last couple of years, uh, more so after the pandemic really, um, what's been happening is we've it's, it, the, the company's more and more moved towards just doing clock restoration. We get very, very few um, clocks in now that just need a service. I mean, they're all, the, the work is always much more extensive. Um, we've moved away from uh, using ultrasonic cleaners and things like that. We now do literally have every single thing by hand now. Uh, all the movements are cleaned by hand. The two movements in front here uh, are ones that have been cleaned by hand. Uh, and I have someone who comes in and helps me. Uh, he's pretty versatile as Steve. Uh, he, he, he's, he's able to do anything that I ask him to do. We're doing some case work. We're doing some uh, dial work. Uh, what I'm going to do with some of these videos over the next well just indefinitely really uh, when we get some certain clocks in I'm going to go through how they're restored from start to finish pointing out a few things pointing out the way I do it uh, I'm not saying the way I do it is the only way to do it what I'm saying is it's the way that works for us uh, and we don't get any complaints um, obviously uh, the idea uh, with with antique clocks is, is to restore them to a sympathetic level rather than over restore them so that they look like the you know they just come out of John Lewis's which is not the way we want to be. Uh, we restore them in order that they look you know a good condition antique clock. Um that's that you know that's had things done to it more traditionally rather than using methods you know that are really too modern for it and it looks you know really out of place with with, with everything you're supposed to be trying to achieve with an antique clock uh, this is what we've moved more towards and it seems to be working really well if you look at our Google page uh, Clock Repairs Merseyside you'll see some of the jobs we've done but I'm now going to try my very very best if I can time per uh, permitting to put a bit more on YouTube uh, in order that you know people can see what we can do as I say These couple of movements in front of us, uh, one is a time clock, uh, an old time clock, round about from 1930s I would think, and the other clock behind that is a, a, obviously a grandfather clock movement. It's uh, ready to go back on its seat board and be set up, uh, and then it'll go in our other workshop at the side, which I'll, I'll also show, us, show everybody as well, where we test uh, clocks without the dial on for about a week, and then we test them with the dial on for about a week. Obviously the reason we don't test with the dial on is order that we can you know to, to make sure that it's striking correctly as it should do uh, you know because obviously we don't want to be taking dials off uh, every time it, it gets a fault if it gets a fault weird and you know because doing that I mean you know the dials are you know the dials have been around for hundreds of years and so you don't want to be sort of pull them on and off and you know taking chances on losing bits of paint and one thing and another no matter how careful you are so the way we put it with the way we do it is we put it on test without its dial on for a week and then with its dial on for a week and we see how it goes from there and when we're absolutely a hundred percent happy what we do then is give the customer a call bring them into us show them how it works show them how to get a clock put in beat again uh, and we go from there and this has worked very successful for me for probably over five six years now uh, so that's the way i intend to do it as i say we're going to be doing quite a lot of restoration uh, these two clocks as i say in front they're just clock movements if I move something else in front, this is a, a clock dial. Uh, it's been stripped down to its component level and it will be getting obviously, uh, you know, sanded off, uh, rubbed down till all the, all the old silvering is removed and then it will be resilvered again and then obviously lacquered. Uh, to give it, uh, you know, to sort of it, it as it as it was. Uh, this clock is actually a sale. It was it was bought in by us, but a customer brought a clock to us, which was more modern. The you know it was it was one of them situations where you know we said it's going to cost X amount of money, and they weren't really keen. But in out the corner that that I they seen. Uh, this clock which is in the corner of the case is actually away at the minute Steve is actually working on the case for us it's an old old case uh, the, the clock is actually a Gustav Becker probably dates round about 1900 uh, so that will be rubbed off the movement
is here. And it is the movements at the minute is not in a good state of affairs but obviously that will end up like the uh, clock movements you've just seen springs and that have been removed ready to strip the movement completely down and give it uh, the tender love and care it certainly deserves really really nice clock lovely uh, Westminster chime on it uh, nice and soft nice and soft you know obviously with the the leather insert on the hammers it, it, it gives it that sort of warmth if you if you know what I mean you can really tell the difference um, moving on to a few other things getting that out the road for now uh, this is the, the way we get grandfather clocks in as you can see uh, this one uh, it says I think you Roberts of Langefni, which obviously is in Wales, uh, but as you can see, the two hands are completely odd. Um, this one has been, you know, soldered by someone to attempt to try and make it uh, look. I don't know what they was trying to make it look, um, but yeah, I mean, obviously we're going to try to obviously massively improve all that. Very, very difficult to get hands, original hands for grandfather clocks. They're really, really expensive. Um, I'm going to see what we can do with that um, I don't know we've got a hand here that's smooth we've got a hand with decoration I don't know at the minute I'm going to have to really give that some thought uh, see what we can do don't know the dial not too bad I, I don't think he really wants anything doing with the dial he, he, he didn't seem over keen about anything doing with the dial I mean unless the dial's really really bad I don't think really you should touch it. I think it, it fits within the clock itself. We turn it round. The movement. Pretty standard eight day striking clock movement. Going to do a bit of research on it. He, he, he says it's about 17, 1790. I think I agree with him. Um, it's got a false plate on it. So it probably is... Around about 1790, maybe after. Uh, the false plate, I think, was made by Walker in Birmingham. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a pretty standard unit. It has got striking faults. So obviously, I'll be looking around the area of the, the, the Gathering Palace and, and the rack. Uh, it's probably got a problem, maybe there. But yeah, I mean, we'll show all that stripped down and, and what we do and check the pinions out. Um, it's had some someone's been quite heavy handed with the bushing at the back as you can see it's it's been punched by someone um yeah so that's something that needs checking out but that could that could have well been done a hundred or so years ago couldn't it really i mean you know th this is the thing with antique clocks i mean you know you see some work and it, it's not really it's not really that good and obviously you do you do tidy it up and improve it but I mean, you know, some of these things have been done probably about a hundred years ago, but you know, they've they've worked all this time. Noticed he's also got a couple. I don't know if you can see them. Odd wheels on it. You know, we've got that, um, one's large and one's small. Obviously, again, they're odd. Someone's put cables through with. What looks like centre collets off a off a quartz movement or something. Um, obviously, they get they'll end up being pieces of short steel or wood, maybe or, or brass, whatever uh, is you know anyway anyway something something right something that that does the job properly and doesn't look so unsightly. Um, you know. And we know we know it's not on display, but you know realistically you should do your job correctly. I mean, and I mean certainly you don't go around finding old bits of washes and nuts and things like that and doing it that way. Um, another little clock here, quite a nice clock. This one, uh, nice, nice, uh, nice fresh dial on it. Um, when Stanley of Hollywell, again, going over to 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 the Wales area, we do get quite a bit of stuff in from Wales, um, more North Wales obviously because that's nearer to, to, to Merseyside Liverpool, uh, there is actually I do know 
the guy over in Craig who's over I think more towards South Wales TikTok excellent restoration work he does uh, had quite a few conversations with Craig really good he knows his job fantastic if you're over in the South Wales area look him up look him up uh, I can certainly highly recommend him um, again movement's not too bad it's obviously been serviced in its lifetime uh, it looks pretty clean but obviously now you can see you know there's been a few punch marks here and there with what they've done with what someone's done uh, but yeah all in all looks pretty clean another false plate so I'd say about 1790 between 1790 and 1820 uh, Walker of Birmingham again so yeah probably comes from a similar area coming quite locally just up the road uh, I think someone's had a had a pop at the dial um, let you get the camera back just a touch just so we can have a, a little look at it I have to excuse my amateur amateur work on the camera I'm, I'm, I'm obviously you know it's not I'm not David Bailey or nothing, or you know, pretty amateur. I'm not going into the movie industry just yet. Um, got too much to do. Right, as you can see from this clock, um, looks like it's had quite a bit of work done on it. The hands for the start off, uh, black. Someone's painted them black. They originally probably would have been brass. It's quite heavy uh, the way they've put it on. It's 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 you know, it looks unsightly. That will be getting sorted out. Improve. Someone's put. A needle or a pin through the centre of the hand, the hand collet to keep the hand collet on. We've got our minute hand missing, our date uh, hand missing. Could have happened absolutely years ago, a long, long time ago. Probably has. And that's some bits, so we've got his, his minute hand in there, and oh, the suspension thing. Now this movement is is in pretty bad shape so I would suspect who's ever done any work on it probably didn't have any real idea of anything because what they, they've just totally left the movement the movement looks like it hasn't been serviced in in probably a hundred years um, so that'll be getting done uh, this also has got a striking problem he says the date doesn't work very often we can we can sort the date situation out on them and, and moon rollers and things like that, but not all the time because sometimes quite often parts are missing, uh, and, and you know we've got no real uh, way of seeing what was there. We, you know we we can obviously do our best, but sometimes there's just far too many parts missing for us to actually deal with it. So you know. And, and more often than not, the customer knows, and the, the date hasn't worked. You know, if it's been in the family, they'll say, "Oh, the date hasn't worked for, you know, since I can remember." So, you know, that's that's the way it is. And obviously, all these things take a lot of time. And obviously, you know, there's a there's a there's a there's a cost in there, and usually an expensive cost because clock repairs are not cheap. Um. Yeah. So. That's pretty pretty much where I'm at. Um, I'm going to do other, a few other little things as well. I'm going to, um, you know, show people around the workshop, various tools, um, all the things I tried to. I, I, I said I was going to do before the pandemic, and then unfortunately, um, you know, this this is what we were left with. We had we had nothing but problems, and you know, we couldn't get back to it really. Yeah, uh, and yeah, that's 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 where it where it, where it really left me. Uh, there was there was nothing I could could really do. I couldn't get the time. We weren't getting customers in. It was the, the place was absolutely chock a block with chock a block with stuff. Uh, you know, we couldn't get it back. People couldn't collect. Uh, it just caused no end of problems. We we weren't able to get raw materials to make any spare parts. It, it just carried on and on, and you know there was there was not a lot we could do. Uh, we expected it to be for six months, but fortunately it was just for, for 18 nearly, and even then, I mean, we're now at that stage now where, you know, we, 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 
we don't we fortunately we, we haven't got a lot of we don't have a lot of traffic coming through the workshops uh, because we like customers to come one at a time we book a slot for them uh, they come and see us so that we can spend the time talking to them uh, we're not the type of uh, company that just wants to take people in and you know just oh, it gives you a clock we'll bring you up with an estimate we have a chat and we find out what's happening with the clock we find out you know especially if they've had it for a period of time and it's it's been like it's been in the family we want the clock to go to them and as they remember it uh, so we, we pay loads of attention and we write things down and and then we, 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 we ring the customer and keep them in touch with what's happening and if we're not sure or something we give the customer a ring and we say you know this is what we found what can you remember anything about this so and we go through we, we just try to you know bring that memory back rather than just you know here you go here's your clock it's fixed you know give us a few bob it it's it, it's you know we're not like that i've never what i've never been taught like that uh you know we, we, we just get things as as right as we can um and that's really it this is just a, as i say a short introductory video on what I intend to try and do obviously with time constraints uh, if you do need to know more everybody's welcome to ring me at Clock Repairs Merseyside and speak to me my, my name's John or speak to Steve whichever way uh, you know you're always welcome we're, we're quite happy to give free advice uh, no, no nonsense advice and no nonsense approach to it all we you know we don't try to blind people with science and you know make the job look more difficult than it is you know because at times I think that's what happens I mean you know often often the jobs that you know you just get on it and and do it in a methodical way and they uh, follow certain ways you've been taught and pay a lot of attention to detail I mean you know the results can end up really really good I mean just have a look at my uh, page on clock repairs Merseyside on Google you'll see some of the stuff we've done and some of the reviews I have Um thankfully they're all fa favorable so I'll jump off now Leave, leave us all to have a look at this video and hope to put a few more videos on in the future. Uh, but as I say, please don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.